Hi everyone, Ted Wyman here with another edition of Jet Setting. And today it is a pretty big day in the history of the Winnipeg Jets, to be honest. They've uh, just announced pretty massive seven-year matching, seven-year deals for center Mark Shifley and goaltender Connor Hellebuck. These are contract extensions that are going to keep them in Winnipeg, potentially for their entire careers, both guys who were drafted by the Jets. Uh, it's you know, it's it's pretty big news, guys. Uh, Scott Billick is with me and Paul Friesen. And it's pretty big news, particularly because that was such a thing that was hanging over the organization's head going into the season, has been since the end of last season. And now they go into the season with a whole different outlook, don't they? Because now they know that the, the, the organization has has made a really strong move towards saying, we're not rebuilding anymore. We're going for it. Scott, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I think you can look at it a couple ways. You know, is the team better today than it was yesterday when these guys signed? Or, you know, when they weren't signed? You know, I, I wouldn't suggest that. But does the vision of this team, is the vision of this team moving forward, something that Kevin Shoveldayoff, the general manager of this team, struggled mightily to kind of paint at the end of last season, um, has that now been, you know, kind of shown here? Have the Jets sort of shown their hand? And I, I think the answer is yes. I, you know, I, I think regardless of, you know, you want to debate how long or how old these guys will be at the end of the extension and all that. I mean, for now, I think you've got three, four, maybe even five years now where your window is still ajar. And, and, and so you can now plan accordingly. You're going to have – your top line center and your 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 Vesna winning goaltender um, locked up, and and that's a big deal. You know, it, it it stops the Jets from having to figure this out next year potentially when they don't have. I mean, they're having a tough enough time. You know, I wouldn't call it maybe not a tough enough time, but they have they had a tough time. They're still trying to figure out if Cole Perfetti can be the second line center. Um, they don't have really buddy, anybody in the system that would really fit that bill. I mean, you got Brad Lambert, you got um, uh, Chaz Lucius as well, but there's no guarantees on those guys. There's still no guarantee that, that Cole Perfetti is a, a center in the NHL either. It's, it's been a bit of an experiment, and there's obviously a long leash for him. But so, so this, you know, you already lost your second line center this summer in Pierre Luc Dubois. Um, the thought of this team losing its top line center next summer might have thrown this team into a rebuild. And the signing of these two guys um, shows that that's not going to take place. I, I don't think either of those guys resign here. If there was ever even a hint of a rebuild moving forward, uh, I, you know, at, at 30 years of age for both of them, they want to win a Stanley cup. And that's really all that these two have left to do. Um so yeah, I mean, I you know, I th it's obviously a good thing for the club. Um, does it make them better right now? I I don't think so, but I, I think there's now uh, I, there's going to be a renewed emphasis on trying to fit this team into a window of four or five years um, with an influx of young talent that they're going to be able to put onto this roster for cheap. You know, just with ELCs and stuff like that. You're looking at Colby Barlow's, the Lamberts, the the Luciuses, the the Rutger, the Rutger Magorstis, the Elias Salmonsons, the Vili Hainalas. Like, there's going to be, um, you know, sort of reinforcements that that play well with the cap going forward. And and by the end of it, these these contracts might not be that bad. I mean, we look at the Blake Wheeler contract in his last year and him getting bought out as being a a bad contract in the end, but if the cap goes up by 4 million next year and it's projected to maybe go up as, as much as 10 over the next three years, these eight million, eight and a half million dollar AAVs for both these guys. I mean, they're, they're about 10% now of the roster uh, of their cap space um, each, but they're not going to be that much, you know, in the end. So there, there might be a little bit of protection there for the jets too, where, whereas contracts or the cap rises, at least that there there's, it's not going to be as bad in the end as it was, let's say, for, for Blake Wheeler. So, yeah, it's a good day, obviously. I mean, it's a good time for the Jets. It's a good time for the fan base. There's a lot less to worry about from, from everybody involved um, moving forward. You know, But at the end of the day, you still have a largely the same core that hasn't gotten it done. And the Jets have to find a way now to supplement it, complement it, whatever you want to, want to, want to say. And, and the big question is, who are these Winnipeg Jets this year? I mean, this is one of the things I'm covering in our season preview. 
I don't think anybody really knows the answer to that. And they're not going to really know until they play the games. And you can say that every year about any team, I suppose. But, you know, this year, this team doesn't have two of their stars. Uh, you know, Dubois and Wheeler gone. This is a little uncharted water. Who's going to make up for that production? There's a, there's a lot of things here. So it's a good day, as I said. Um, but, I, you know, I think we're still going to be thinking about this in a couple of years. And that that's when this team might. Um, you know, maybe in a year or two where this team really kind of builds around what they, what they, I guess, restarted, I suppose, um, over the last 48 hours here. Paul, is it all good? I mean, I know that when you go and you sit at the ice plex, uh, this happened today, where Kevin Cheveldayoff and Rick Bonus are sitting with uh, Mark Scheifele and Connor Hellebuck. They're signing their contracts in a photo opportunity everybody's talking incredibly positively. You talk to players in the locker room, they're very excited about this idea of the Jets being all in. But is it all positive when this is the road that it's ended up with for the Winnipeg Jets in terms of how these guys are, how they're proceeding with these players who are already 30 years old? Well, it's the status quo, right? And how good is the status quo? I guess that depends on your perception. Um, Last season didn't end well, so basically the same team as got mentioned. Three, three pretty uh, key potential additions from from LA in that trade, but what it does, it lifts a pretty big cloud, doesn't it? I mean, not just the uh, Shifley Hellebuck cloud, which uh, we would have been probing and asking about as as the mid part of the season came along, as the trade deadline came along, it would have been a growing story and potential distraction. So it lifts that, but even more it lifts the, this big system that seemed to be taking over this team. If you want to compare it to a weather system. I mean, when Patrick Liney and Pierre-Luc Dubois want to leave, you add Mark Scheifele and Connor Heldbuck to that. That's not a good trend. That's not a good look. That's a potential a lightning storm of, of bad news. So mm. that's lifted. Suddenly the sun was shining today. And what struck me was this was one big happy family today, right? Rick Bowen is looking at Shifley and Hellbuck and saying, thanks for staying, guys. And Rick Bonus wasn't always saying positive things about his players. At the end of last season, it, it uh, kind of fell apart, right? So it, it's funny because it's a, it's the status quo on one hand, uh, which wasn't great when the season ended last year. The status quo wasn't great. Um, but it felt like a, a new beginning in some ways, too, even though it's the same players coming back. So, yeah, the proof will be in the pudding on the ice, right? We'll see how the uh, the new version of the Jets look starting starting on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we've seen a lot. We've seen a lot going back to uh, the exit meetings two years ago. The exit meetings this last year. Um, what a lot of players and people like uh, assistant coach uh, or associate coach uh, Scott Arneal and head coach Rick Bonus have said. What Paul Stastny said when he was leaving the Jets, uh, you know, after his last exit interview, it sounded like this team had a culture problem that there, it wasn't a great situation in the locker room. And they've addressed that somewhat because Blake Wheeler was stripped of the captaincy and then eventually was bought out and is now with the New York Rangers. Pierre-Luc Dubois is gone. There's a, a bit, there's certainly a change in there. The question to me that I want to pose to you guys is, you know, are, is it going to be enough of a cultural ch culture change or are Sh were Shifley and Hellebach enough of a part of that culture already that, maybe this is going to be too much of the status quo going forward. Yeah, exactly. And I'll let Scott uh, take over right away, but I'll just a quick interjection. Mm -hmm. Let's not assume that Pierre-Luc Dubois was part of the culture problem and he's gone, right? And, I, and I'm not ready to assume Blake Wheeler was part of the culture problem and is gone. I think he was highly regarded in that room. Scott may disagree, and we don't maybe don't want to get too much on a Blake Wheeler tangent here, but... Um, yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head there, Ted. These, these two guys were a key part of the culture. And how much has that changed? I guess we find out the coach has a big influence on that, and this is year two for Rick Bonus, so we'll see. Yeah, and, and I don't think you can – I mean, again, we don't want to get bogged down in Blake Wheeler here, but you know, if you're going to assume anybody was at the helm of the way that this team was run in the dressing room, you've got to think it's the team captain and the sure. longtime captain at some point. I'll, I'll say this. I've been at training camp almost every day for the last three weeks. There, and, and, you know, training camp is always this hopeful, enthusiastic time of the year and, and players or whatever. 
but there does have this feeling that it's not necessarily walking on eggshells anymore. Like I, I, and, and I, you know, maybe eggshells and maybe all that is a little hyper hyperbolic, but I, I wonder if there's just a, a bit of a release, uh, you know, the release valve has, uh, the release valve has kind of been turned and, 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 and you're under a new leadership. Like, you know, I, I think that we look at a guy like Adam Lowry and we're like, okay, well, what's he going to do? I mean, what, what is he going to do differently that it wasn't done before? I mean, he was just as much as part of this leadership before he had the C than now that he has a C. I find, I find, I find, I find Adam Lowry to be very pragmatic. I find him to be very much a, uh, you know, if there's, you know, if there's a, let's say a division in this room, he's holding one rope from one side and one rope the, uh, the other and holding it together. Like, I, I think that Adam Lowry brings a, a completely different style of leadership into that dressing room than Blake Wheeler did. I, it, it's not, it's not authoritarian anymore. There, it, there's maybe more of a democracy, let's say. Um, and, and I think that is a big deal for some of the players that maybe were shut out of that inner circle before. Um, you know, it was Mark Scheife in that? Probably. Um, but regardless of whether or not, I mean, I think Mark is, you know, and I, and I don't say this as, as maybe a negative, but, you know, he might follow guys, right? And so if you're following a leader that has a, a different style of leadership and all that now, you know, I, I think that could be a good thing for this team. I, I you know, I, I think there's there's a couple parts of this that that are interesting. I, you know, I, I I do wonder, and there's a bit of a theory, I suppose. Did Kevin Shovelaf, you know, say this summer, let's let let these guys go look out and see what's out there, right? You know, because the Jets probably had their number, and that's what they were going to stick with. You look at eight point five for each of those guys, it's easily conceivable that they both got more. Would have got more next summer. Um, that's just the way the NHL works. It, you know, the, both of those positions are highly coveted across this league, a top line center and, and a, and a franchise goaltender, even with this league shifting to, you know, kind of tandems and that sort of thing, having a guy as reliable and, and as workhorse as, 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 as Hellebuck is, um, you know, that commands a lot of money on the open market. But I wonder if these guys went out there this summer you know, there's different situations. Maybe Boston was in there, maybe New Jersey for Hellebuck, who knows? But there's sometimes, you know, the grass isn't greener. And and, and sometimes the difference between nine and a half million and eight and a half million is a million dollars. But when you're making that much money already, you know, is there something? And, and Connor Hellebuck alluded to this on, on Tuesday, talking about, you know, there's something about not necessarily, it's not just always about money. And I think you saw two guys, and and like I think we have to, you know, we've criticized Kevin Shovel Day off a lot. You got to look at this and say this is a big win for Kevin Shovel Day off. He got two guys on 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 I would call them still team friendly contracts. They might be the two most highest paid guys starting next season, um, and it's the biggest contract I think we've seen on this team um, since they returned. I'd, I'd have to remember what uh, um, Dustin Bufflin was making. Um, but Wheeler was making 8.125. Um, so it, it, you know, they're making more than that, but it's they don't win if they win. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I agree, but it, it's a win in, in the sense that if the cap is going up and, and they're going to have more money to kind of work around the edges of this team to make it better. So, um, but you know, it, 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 to me, I think just this team has a different outlook, uh, now and, and, you know, We'll see. I mean, they had a different outlook net last year when Rick Bonus took over. But as much as this team kind of maybe turned their back on Rick, I think Rick also went this into this summer and 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 looked in the mirror himself and like, okay. And he said it a couple times now. He knows how to deal with these players differently um, than he would have last year. I, I think his pr- approach was very iron fisted last year. Um, he said it himself. He needed to change the culture. The culture needed to change. He's been very open about that and they've done that did it go too far at times perhaps did it rub guys the wrong way uh obviously i mean they they basically said as much um but it's it's a new year and and it's a you know i i don't think mark shifley and connor hellbuck re-sign here if they're at odds with rick bonus if they're at odds with if they don't see a vision for success on this team like you know obviously they, they haven't experienced that success before 
But I, I think both of those guys leave if they don't see it, right? They don't see a plan. So th- there's something in place here, or there's something yeah. that's convincing them to stay here. And that, that I, you know, we all thought these both of these guys were gone, right? We did. And then yesterday, gotta, and, and yeah. yeah, I know. And so to me, something has changed here, and and it's got to be both sides because I think Kevin Chevaldeoff has had to actually go out there and figure out what the actual direction of this. He was heavily criticized for not showing it last year. And I don't even know if he knew it at the time because it, it, there was a lot in flux. Um, yeah, you, you, but, spoke yeah. with, you spoke with Hellebuck's agent uh, today, which was pretty revealing, I thought, yeah. looking at what he said. And that is the message from the draft. Right from then on, the Dubois trade was, we're in to win. We want and to they, win. And they bought it, right? They buy that message. Yeah, yeah he said, uh, you know, Ray Petkow is the agent uh, from Steinbach. And he said that that... Basically, at that draft, Chevaldeoff said, we're in it to win. Mark Chipman said, we're in it to win. Rick Bonus said, we're in it to win. You guys can be assured that we're in it to win. And they had face-to-face meetings with Connor. And this is what Connor Hellebuck wanted to know. He was not sure at the end of uh, the season last year. He was absolutely not certain what his future looked like. He wanted to wait and see what the landscape looked like. And if, this, like team, yeah, the year before. if this team was going to yeah. rebuild... He didn't want to be a part of that. But if it's going to build and he can be a part of building and try to win, that's good. Uh, It's just good for the Winnipeg Jets organization. It's good for the city because this city doesn't want a team that's going into a rebuild. They're having trouble selling tickets right now, or they have had trouble. I'm not sure how ticket sales are going right now, but they weren't very good last season. They need to have something going forward to hang their hats on and you've got two guys who have star quality Connor Hellebuck is one of the best goalies in the league there's no doubt about it Mark Shifley is a top center he's a good center a really really good center these guys have marketability and they went out and made sure they got it and and I just want to say that I think um we know that it's not easy for the Winnipeg Jets to sign players to contracts to get them to come here you've got to go with draft and develop well if they've got two guys here that they drafted developed and they end up paying their entire careers here, and they've given them this this seven year deal right now to make sure that that happens. That they've got them in some still some prime years. Then I don't know that you can ask for much more as Jets fans because they're not going to be able to go out and get a player like that. You've got to sign them from within, and they were able to do it. So it's a, it is definitely a pretty big moment for the Winnipeg Jets. And Paul, um, what do you think? You know, it's pretty hard to predict the future, but when the team is just heading into the season uh, and, and a season that we all have acknowledged is, is some uncertainty. Uh, you know, there's certainly some uncertainty about it as to how well they might do. Do you think a thing like this could buoy a team at least early on? I wouldn't have a clue, but Josh Morrissey sure said it today. A <laughs> jolt of energy, he said, would, is sent through the team when this happened. Um, apparently the dressing room was all cheers when the, the two players announced it yesterday, right? Uh, so yeah, I, I think it's got a it's got to have a, a very short term little boost. It's not going to take you through any kind of a weeks long uh, surge here or anything. But uh, you know, I, I'm just curious to see when adversity hits, like it did last year. How do they handle it? Yep. it didn't handle it well last year. Same, many of the same players are back, and we'll see if they handle it any better. Because uh, you're gonna, you're going to have adversity. It's going to hit. And how do you handle it? How long do you let it drag you down? And do you let it drag you down? So it'll be it'll be pretty fascinating, but it might take a few months for us to really know, right? Yeah. To me, it's that's a lot about that culture that we talk about. It's yeah. like, how do you handle that adversary at, at you know adversity? That's yeah. part of culture. Yeah. And last year when the adversity hit, this team folded like a cheap tent. There was just no question about it. And they did it yeah. in the regular season and then they did it in the playoffs when they were playing Vegas. And there was no one out there that was more critical of that situation than Rick Bonus himself. And it certainly caused some, you know, tension. Ruffled between feathers. The yes. players. It did. And I mean, yeah. but I, I, one of the things I like about Rick Bonus is he doesn't care about that. He's, no. you know, exactly. he's like, we can mend that fence later or we can smooth those feathers later. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and so he said his piece, they've all come back. They've got another chance to, to do it all again. And they've got, you, you can't say that it's it's just not the same going in here. There has been a change in this team. There have been a couple yep. of players out, a few more players in, 
and there is, you know, some renewed, there has to be some renewed faith from that whole group that the organization means what it's saying because they put their money where their mouth is when it comes to uh, Shifley and Hellebuck. And guys, I just want to wrap it up pretty quickly here, but it's the season opener on Wednesday night in Calgary. Scott, what kind of team? Quickly, uh, but what kind of team do you see this Jets being? These Jets being early on. I think they come out of the gate hard to play against, like they did last year, right? And I think that's, you know, th- this whole season is really going to be about consistency in that. Like, you know, they've spent. It's been an intense training camp. Um, every player will tell you that, and and it's not just lip service. You know, we've watched it, and and this is a team that's trying to be very difficult to play against and they've been robbed a little bit by injuries and the flu bug in training camp. The second line hasn't played a game together yet um, with Nikolai Ehlers and Cole Perfetti. How much has that stunted the growth of that line um, remains to be seen. Um, They have a little bit of catch up to do, but I, you know, I think they're going to run into that game tomorrow in Calgary on a little bit of a high too, right? I mean, there is a bit of an emotional lift that's happened over the last, you know, 48 hours here with, with, with these new contracts. Um, I, you know, I think this team can ride that wave. I think they can ride the wave of um, it just being a new season. And, you know, I, I think I think the biggest thing for this team is, is going to be, and as it always has been, can they stay consistent and can they figure out who they really are? And uh, we're going to find out starting tomorrow. But it's it's a deeper team. Uh, is it better? It, it, you know, it, we'll see. I, I think it's deeper on forward. Does that make it, the defense uh, better? Uh, we'll see. I mean, I think this is part of it too. We look at this defense and the logjam and all that kind of thing, and and we wonder, you know, is it the defense's fault or not? I mean, I think last season a large part of it is that the team got away from playing the defensive game. It wasn't just the two guys on the blue line that, that were the issue. So, and I think they're just better in goal. I mean, I think they can actually trust their backup. Now they could not trust David Riddick, David Rick's on waivers, uh, you know, as we speak right now in, in LA, um, I think that tells it's a little telling, but uh, you know, they, they have a guy now that, that led their, his team to half a Stanley cup championship before getting injured. Like, I mean, you, he out dueled Connor Hellebuck in that series. I mean, it, so I, I think this team is better all around, even though they lost two players on paper that would make them look worse. So it, it's kind of a weird thing to say, um, but sometimes there is addition by subtraction, right? And I think I think we're looking at that. So we'll see what happens going into the year. But um, you know, I, I think they go into Calgary with you know in in pretty good spirits, um, just because of what we're we've talked about for most of this for most of this segment. And Paul, last word to you. Do you think Rick Bonus can get the best out of this team? Sure. <laughs> it's quite the problem. Well, I mean, he, <laughs> he did for Elder convincing, wasn't it? He did for half a season last year. Um, can't really put my finger on uh, why it all fell apart. But uh, yeah, I think a second a second year under him, I, I expect uh, I don't expect that they'll be as that high in the standings as they were perhaps last season, but I expect a more consistent full 82 game season than we got. Uh, asked Josh Morrissey last week about uh, what, what their identity is going to be this year. He says, the goal is to have every line, every player look the same. Uh, you can't tell who it is out there. They're all playing the same 200 foot game forward and back. That sure hasn't been the case in the past. So if they can get there and Rick bonus said it again today too, I asked what he wanted out of Mark Shifley this year to make make the team better, and he said just a 200-foot game like we want from everybody. So if they can get that from everybody, they'll be all right. They might sneak into the playoffs again. Pretty tall order from Mark Shifley to suddenly become this uh, consistent <laughs> foot player. It hasn't happened in his career so far, but you know, you never know what is next when he's got his new contract in hand. I had a conversation with Nito Niederreiter today, and I asked him what he liked about the Jets, and he said... I like that on, uh, at forward, at least, everybody can play everywhere. We yep. feel like we've got depth. We can move everybody around on these lines and and make, you know, uh, and, and be a really good, consistent team in that sense. And I think that speaks to somewhat of what uh, uh, Josh Morrissey was saying as well. Um, anyway, fellas, thanks very much. First Jets setting of the season. There will be many more as the Winnipeg Jets get their 2023-24 season underway in Calgary on Wednesday night. 
For Scott Billick and Paul Friesen, I'm Ted Wyman, and you've been watching Jet Setting on winnipegsun.com.